Time now for me to ask the question, how is Star Trek Discovery Season 3 a thing? I recently read a YouTube comment from someone saying that Star Trek the original series was renewed for a third season because of the fans. Star Trek Discovery is being renewed for a third season to spite the fans. <laughs> Though it may sometimes feel that way given how detached from the fan base the show has become, the reality is CBS All Access probably needs it in order to help sell its subscriptions. My question is, what exactly has Star Trek Discovery done to justify a third season? It has a 48% audience rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Critics may love it, but that means nothing these days. This show is universally panned by most fans. Yes, it does have its own small fan base, but can the powers that be seriously justify spending more money on this train wreck? Each episode costs about $8 million. It has an impressive production quality, but the stories and writing are just abysmal, and the political bias of the show is extremely off-putting and has been since the beginning. The reality is, CBS All Access needs a flagship show in order to help promote its on-demand streaming service. I suspect they anticipated Star Trek Discovery would be received much better than it has been at this point. The following article is from Audioholics.com, from before it was announced that Star Trek Discovery has been renewed for a third season. Can Star Trek Discovery carry CBS All Access? Star Trek Discovery launched as an exclusive to CBS's new streaming service, All Access, on September 24, 2017. The network is leaning heavily on the Star Trek brand to give CBS All Access a competitive edge in the crowded online streaming video market. Established brands like HBO, Netflix, and Amazon already dominate the space, with heavy competition on the way from Disney and Apple. Star Trek has a reliable fan base that CBS wants to exercise under its somewhat complicated stewardship of Star Trek on TV, while at the same growing a more mainstream audience with an edgy new look and feel. But growing Star Trek in this way is proving to be a difficult feat and risks alienating its core audience. Star Trek Discovery is critically acclaimed with 82% and 83% respectively for seasons 1 and 2 on Rotten Tomatoes, but fan reaction has been poor, with an audience score of 52% for season 1 and only 29% so far for season 2. Again, this article was written a few weeks ago. It goes on to say, But it's obvious that Discovery has departed tonally from past Star Trek in an effort to appeal to a wider audience, which is almost always a mistake. It's been said that Discovery is made for people who don't like Star Trek, and I can't disagree. CBS needs Star Trek to be that flagship brand that lures subscribers onto its streaming service. It needs both Trek's built-in audience and additional mainstream appeal. The result is a violent, dark show with unflinching lethality in the style of Game of Thrones. We're left the question what happened to the positive, inclusive vision of the future set by Gene Roddenberry. Of course, Discovery includes social commentary, but its message is conveyed through a darkly punitive tone. This is an excellent point by the author of this article. Discovery has lost all of the fun, charisma, hope and optimism that made Star Trek what it was. Beyond maybe Saru and Season 2's Captain Pike, the characters run the gamut from bland to insufferable. Sure, previous Trek shows had characters that weren't all that popular, but the casts of the previous series were mostly filled with likeable and compelling characters. Star Trek could cover dark topics and political issues, even horror at times, without losing a sense of its core philosophy and hopeful vision of the future. Discovery seems to be written by people who have only a vague idea of what Star Trek is. It's a real shame that Brian Fuller was fired. It might have actually been something under his stewardship. In short, Star Trek Discovery is not going to be sufficient to attract people to the CBS All Access platform, at least not in any significant numbers. It seems only fitting, given how poorly fans and the Star Trek property has been treated in recent years, especially since the Paramount-CBS split, which led to this ridiculous alternate Star Trek licensed nonsense and ambiguity surrounding Prime vs. Canon Trek. I suspect the third season to be its last, unless the show can radically alter course and actually become watchable, though even if it does drastically improve, the damage has probably already been done. The series has burned a lot of bridges with fans, and it's unlikely they're ever going to want to come back.